In this video, I will show you the basic editing features in Nitro. You enter edit by picking the first button on the right side panel. At the top is shot information, including shutter speed, ISO, and camera. You can collapse it or expand it to get more information. Next is the histogram, which includes clipping indicators. I'll describe the clipping indicators later. Histograms visually describe the distribution of color or tone in an image. The leftmost column represents black, and the rightmost column represents white. The height of the histogram tells you how much of the image contains that value. In this image, even though it's pretty bright, you can see that most of the pixels are actually kind of bright, but not actually white. And there's relatively little in the dark area of the image, which matches what we see in the image itself. You can also hide the histogram if you like. That both gives more screen real estate and also improves performance some because the histogram won't be updated when it's closed. The next section shows the main editing panels. The first has quick fixes like auto enhance, spot removal, and clone. There are some additional ones that will appear based on the image you have. Another one, highlight recovery, will appear for certain types of raw images. The next has presets and LUTs. The third, has sliders, which is what I'm going to be covering mostly today. And the last is masking, which will be its own video as well. The adjustments are listed in a common workflow order. For example, many people crop early in the process to make sure that they are only concerning themselves with the part of the image they're interested in. However, other people like to crop at the end, or perhaps they apply white balance correction first. Nitro lets you reorder the adjustments in the UI. To do that, go to Settings and pick Configure. You can drag adjustments up and down. You can also change the Auto Collapse Adjustment setting. If it's on, then adjustment sections will open and close automatically as you use them to save space. Note that reordering adjustments only changes the appearance in the UI. It does not change the order that the adjustments are processed to make an image. Let's start with crop. For most adjustments, you do not need to click this checkbox before working. It'll turn itself on. Just start dragging sliders or otherwise working with the image. The controls below the crop checkbox are tools. The crop tool, straighten tool, rotate, and flip. When you make a change to an adjustment, the checkbox automatically enables and a reset button appears as well. I can click the checkbox to turn the adjustment off or I can clear the adjustment by clicking the reset button. The crop tool is mostly self-explanatory. However, I should point out the control that appears when you turn it on. This number sign controls a rule of thirds guide. If I turn that off, you'll see I just get the crop box. Next to it is a megapixel reading that tells you the size of the image after the crop has been applied. Next up is white balance. The white balance indicates the color temperature of the image, and you can adjust it if the image has a tint you want to neutralize. There are also presets for common scenes, such as daylight or fluorescent lighting. One way to adjust white balance is to use the auto white balance control. It looks for an area that it thinks should be a gray value and then changes the temperature and the tint so that it matches. Alternatively, you can use an eyedropper. When you use the eyedropper, you want to do something similar to what the auto white balance is doing. Look for an area that should be gray. You don't want something white or very bright. You don't want something too close to black something that's kind of more of a middle tone. That gives the white balance algorithm the most latitude. I can also drag while I'm doing this and it will change the white balance in real time. Next is tone. The tone adjustment is an important one for controlling brightness in the image. The first one is boost. Boost is a very important slider when recovering highlights, 
and you won't find it in apps from other companies. It controls a key part of Apple's raw decoder. That could almost use a whole video. And in my other app, Raw Power, you had to know how to use it to get the best results when recovering highlights. However, in Nitro, there's a better way. Just use the Recover Highlights Quick Fix that I mentioned a little bit earlier. That'll move the boost slider and other important sliders for you. Let's jump over to the Quick Fix section here, that first editing panel. You'll see Recover Highlights appears. Recover Highlights appears for raw images except it will not appear for pro raw images because highlight recovery is really not a thing that you can do with pro raw images. They've already been balanced. Before we get started on recover highlights, let me go back to the histograms clipping indicators, these circles at the top of the histogram. Clipping indicators are used to identify very bright and very dark parts of the image. If an image has extremely bright pixels, the circles will light up. If you click on the circles, you get an overlay that shows which pixels are too bright or too dark. Another term for this is clipping. Because the pixel value is too large to be represented on screen, and therefore is clipped to the maximum value of white or black. In other words, the pixel is brighter than the brightest value that can be shown on screen. The first circle is the one you will use most often. It will show you any pixels that are clipped because they are too bright or are black. In this case, a pixel is considered clipped if any of the components, red, green, or blue, are above 1.0, which is the highest value that is normally seen on a screen. Another word for a clip pixel is a hot pixel, and a black pixel is sometimes called a cold pixel. If I click here, you will see red for pixels that are too bright and blue for pixels that are black. This is also called a hot and cold pixel overlay. There are some dark pixels down at the bottom of the image and here on the left. Now I'll bring up Recover Highlights. To recover highlights, just drag the first slider. Watch the clipping overlay. You can see how it starts to shrink. And detail is actually coming back in those clouds. Also look at the histogram. You can see how the histogram is also pulling away from that right edge. There's a ton of data right here. That's an indication of an image that probably has clipping. And as I drag it, they pull away. You can then bring up the midtones by moving the second slider, which will brighten the image some. I can move the highlight slider all the way to get rid of every last bit of clipped pixels, but that's not always really necessary. Sometimes you can overdo it. Editing in Nitro is undoable and non-destructive. At the bottom right, you'll see Undo and Redo, and there's another button that you can't see very well here, which looks like two overlapping squares. It's the same button you'll see right here in Recover Highlights. That will let you see the image before the edits were applied so you compare things before and after. It's best to turn off the clipping overlay in that case so you can really see it. You can really see how much more detail came back in those clouds. And there's also Undo and Redo. Press Done to leave the Recover Highlights tool. Now we'll go back to the sliders. Recover Highlights moved four different sliders. It moved Boost, Highlights, Midtones, and Recovery. So that one tool moved four different sliders in a very precise manner to give you back the detail in those clouds. Before I do more work on Tone, let me take a quick detour back to Crop. I'll use this image to show the Straighten tool. Click on this second tool here, which lets me drag a line to straighten an image. So I'll drag it right across this waterfall area. And I press the check mark and straightens the image. I can also move the slider if I like. Tone has a large number of sliders. I mentioned Boost and some other ones already. Exposure is a simple slider for adjusting the entire image's brightness. Highlights just works on the brighter pixels and shadows is for the darker areas. Midtones is right in the center. Blacks, whites, and boost shadows are only available for raw images because they control special settings in Apple's decoder. Blacks in particular are key for dealing with extremely underexposed areas, but that's best explained in another video. I want to stick to the basics here. Recovery is another tool for working with overexposed areas of an image 
because it's tuned to just change the brightest parts of an image. Enhance is up next. It has some basic tools like contrast, saturation, and vibrancy. Vibrancy is like saturation, but it doesn't affect skin tones or orange hues. If I move saturation, you can see how it affects the orange part of the image. But if I move vibrancy, it does a much less of an effect. Deepen and Lighten are smarter versions of highlights and shadows. They work on the brighter or darker parts of the image respectively, but do it in a way that adds richness to an image. Detail has two basic types of sliders, one's for sharpening and one's for noise reduction. Clarity and Sharpen are two types of sharpening sliders. It's best to look at the detail sliders when zoomed in. You can pinch to zoom in or use the buttons on the left, or you can use the command keys. You can see the effect on the carving of the pumpkin with Clarity and Sharpen. You can also move Sharpen to the left to blur an image. Double click a slider to return it back to its default value. You can also use the little arrow buttons next to the sliders to nudge them forward and backward. And you can also double click and type to get a value for any slider as well. The noise reduction sliders can be used to increase or decrease the amount of default noise reduction on an image. Let's look at the right side of this pumpkin and the background. Luminoise controls black and white noise, while color noise controls noise that contains color pixels. As I decrease the luminoise, you will see black speckles appear. See them right there. I can move it past the default to remove even more luminoise. The same goes for the color noise slider. You can really see the color noise slider if I move it to the left. And again, I can remove it by sliding to the right, and the more I move it, the more color noise is removed. Noise reduction can also remove detail from the image. So you can counteract that somewhat with this noise detail slider. Last is perspective. When shooting at an angle, you can get an odd, well, perspective. To fix it, you can move the vertical or horizontal sliders depending on the angle you're shooting. Perspective automatically crops the image. You can decrease that crop by moving the zoom slider. But if you move it too far, you'll get some black areas. You can use the crop tool to remove them. That's a tour of basic editing in Nitro. There'll be more videos covering the other adjustments in the app.